Oh, no swearing, Kate. Wait, where? Keep yourself under control. So today we're going to go back and do a little bit of review. You've done Pythagorean theorem before, you've done distance formula before, but I'm going to show you a different approach that you might find more helpful. So uh, let's start with a little bit of review here. Simplify the square root of 72, please. radical 8. You don't like that answer, Emma? Yes, you don't like it, or yeah, you... Yes, you don't like it. Oh, okay, hold on. So, Gavin, I'm assuming you did uh, the square root of 9 times the square root of 8, yes? And then uh, that gives you 3 times the square root of 8. Yeah? Well, keep going then. Enunciate. You take a two out. Like, because that goes to four times two. That's what I was looking for. Square root of four is? Two. Two, two times three is? Six. Six square roots of two. How many people did it this way? Okay. The rest of you. Square root of 36 times the square root of two, six square roots of two. Who did it that way? Which one is more corrector? Neither, neither. They both get the same result, so we don't care how you do it, as long as you take it as simplified as it can be. Okay, how about the square root of 20? You're going to get answers that are going to be in radical form. Those radicals should be simplified. We've done this already, but I just wanted to this get a, a quick review on how to do Okay, so today our two main topics are Pythagorean theorem, but this is formula. So we're going to start with Pythagorean theorem. Rebecca, what is the Pythagorean theorem? Um, it's uh, so you can find the value of C on a triangle. How? Uh, a squared, B squared, equals C squared. Say that again. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. How many people agree with her? A squared plus B squared equals C squared? Okay. Technically, that's not correct. Because what if the triangle was... Okay, hold on, wait, wait. Let's back up a little bit. I'm going to make some assumptions for today. We technically haven't defined what a triangle is yet. That's coming soon. But is it safe to assume you all know what a triangle is? Yeah. Is it safe to assume you all know what a right triangle is? Yeah. Okay, good. What are the sides of the right triangles called? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse and? Sides. And? No. Adjacent. Legs. Legs. Correct. So A and B are the legs, C is the hypotenuse. Logan, how do you find the hypotenuse in a right triangle? No A and B. But not numerically. How do you just, like if I said go up there and point to the hypotenuse? 
opposite to the right angle. Good. One way to find it is it's opposite the right angle. How else can you find it, Andrew? Uh, it's just the longest line. It's the longest side. Uh, longest line? Longest side. Good. This is not a line. Any others? Okay, those two will get you far. Uh, we also heard today it's the side not attached to the right angle. Whichever one of those helps you find it, I don't care. It doesn't make much sense to me, but we're good to go. Okay, so those are the assumptions we're going to make moving forward. Technically speaking, this is the Pythagorean theorem. But nobody knows that except math nerds like myself. It's actually that is what you're going to use. But it doesn't matter what it's labeled, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, alpha, beta, gamma. As long as that thing over by itself is the hypotenuse. Okay, so if I move those letters A, B, and C around, it doesn't matter as long as the hypotenuse is by itself on the right or left side of anything. Yes? Let's give it a shot. Solve that problem. Don't be bashful about busting out those calculators. You're going to need them later for sure. That was my subtle way of saying get out your calculator. <laughs> Obviously, subtlety doesn't necessarily work with you guys. I will be more direct. up a little bit and had to solve that one. Operating under the assumption, I, have we taken a square root on a calculator yet? Do you all know where the square root is? Okay, good. Just want to make sure. Good question. Would you like to take decimal? Does it matter? Doesn't specify, right? Okay, I'll talk about that. 
Okay, so something weird happened, which I didn't even notice until first period today. And um, well, let's go to the problem first. How am I setting this up? Fourteen squared plus b squared equals twenty-five squared. Can you explain why you set it up that way? Why isn't it fourteen squared plus twenty-five squared equals c squared? Um, because the longest side is the c. So I have twenty-five there, and it didn't matter. Like if I put fourteen as a or b. Okay. Good. Um, One ninety-six plus b squared is equal to six twenty-five. So b squared is equal to 429. Yeah, yeah, 429. Okay, I get to that point. How do I get b by itself? Take the square root. Now, notice in the problem, I didn't specify exact answer or approximate answer. Therefore, you would have the option. Do you want to, well, first of all, did anybody try to simplify that thing? I don't think it does. So that would be the exact answer. However, you could also choose to answer with, yeah, what is it? Let's go two decimal places. 20.7, 20 20.71, ooh, that's an ugly zero. Okay, now here's how we get the weirdness. What's the answer to the question? Now, I didn't intend this when I wrote the problem. Why, why is 14 the answer? Not the same one. I just intended for you to find, I, I intended for the answer to be 20.71, but when I wrote the problem, I didn't do the math and realize that 14 is less than 20.71. Okay. That's way too sneaky to do anything. I mean, I, I wouldn't even use that as a quiz question. Okay. But it is something that, to consider that the actual shortest side is 14. Okay. The nice thing about Pythagorean theorem is there's no other possibilities. You're given the two legs, you solve for the hypotenuse. You're given a leg and a hypotenuse, you show, solve for the other leg, that's it. Okay. So you seem to have mastered that. We're good, can we move on? Yes. Beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna do distance formula. We're gonna take two points and we're gonna put them on a coordinate plane. And I know that many of you are what I continue to call memorizers. And so even after I've gone through this big explanation, you're just gonna go home and memorize the formula. However, I have learned in many years of doing this that this is probably one of the biggest formulas where people make small mistakes that completely screw up the problem. I'll explain a little bit more about that when we get there. I'm going to show you a different method that I think works a lot better. But again, you can use whichever method you want as long as we get the right answer. Okay, so we're going to start with the coordinate plane. And I'll put two random points on the coordinate plane. Now, even though there's some axes up there, and it looks like those two points have coordinates. It's completely irrelevant where they're located. They could be in any one of the four quadrants. They could be on one of the axes. They're just random points, x1, y1, x2, y2. Are you with me for the setup? Okay, and I want to find that distance between them. And I'm thinking that back in algebra, probably where you did this. Your algebra teacher just gave you this big, long, scary formula, which some of you could probably puke up to me right now and tell me what it is and blood and chug and be happy. However, again, I'm going to show you an alternate approach. In order to do that alternate approach, we have to answer two important questions. Here's the first one. How long is that red segment? Now, you might be saying to yourself, self, oh, it's seven because I counted the blocks. But remember, those points can be anywhere on the coordinate plane. So knowing that those points can be anywhere on the coordinate plane, how would you find the length of that red segment? Yeah. 
This one I'm not going to give you. You're going to have to figure this out on your own. Okay. Y1 minus Y2. Hot diggity. Explain. It's like the difference between the point and the length between them. So am I allowed to give random numbers? Sure. Explain my point. Sure, as long as they understand what you're talking about. If y1 were to be 14 and y2 were 7, then if you were to just look at like the y-axis, there'd be a difference of 7 between them. Right. So we can actually talk about the, the real numbers here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's at 10. This is at 1, 2, 3. 10 minus the 3 would make that a distance of 7. Okay. Good. Everybody good with that? Top minus bottom. Yes or no? Sure. Can you redo it? What do you mean by that? I think he means uh, explain it again. Uh. I think the answer might be no. Is that or are you have are you, are you locking up there or are you? I'm just wondering like what's the issue of comprehension so I can like what do you what part of it is confusing? Just do it again. Okay. So Welcome to my world. For just the y coordinate, we need to find the well, the higher point, the bigger number, and find the distance from it to the smaller number. That's what you're trying to accomplish. That makes sense. If this is up at ten from this from this point here, okay, the axes. If this distance is 10 and this distance is 3, then how long is that distance? 7. Seven. Right. So if this distance is y1 then and this distance is y2, then that missing distance would be y1 minus y2. Okay, now we're all good? Okay, so let's take that and answer the second important question, and that is how long is that blue segment? What you say? X two minus X two. Uh, the other way around, but yeah, same idea. X one minus X two. Okay. What kind of triangle is that? Are you sure? Yes. How do you know? It converges at a ninety degree angle. Horizontal meets vertical at a ninety degree angle. Okay, so that is a right triangle, and if it's a right triangle, then we can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A in this case is x1 minus x2, b in this case is y2, y1 minus y2. You put that all together in a Pythagorean theorem little package, and we get something like this. x1 minus x2, that's that distance squared, that's the a squared, plus y1 minus y2 quantity squared, that's the b squared, equals d squared. Normally it would be c squared, but we're looking for d. I don't want d squared, though I want d. How do I get d by itself? Take the square root of both sides. And that leads us to the formula you've probably seen before, which is that, the distance formula. Now, as I said, many of you are just going to write down what's in that green box, memorize it, and try to use it over and over again. I think you'll see, after I do the first example for you, that my method is a little easier. Again, in my humble opinion. You want to use the distance formula? Go ahead. But again, my, my experience has been that there's too many opportunities to screw up there. Changing the minus signs to pluses, changing the pluses to minus signs, forgetting to square it, forgetting to subtract x1 minus x2 instead of x1 minus y1. Okay, so I'll show you, once everybody's done copying this down, how I would solve it, and then you can decide what you want to do. You want to plug into that or you want to use my method? Doesn't matter. Okay, so here's two points. I want to find the distance. What I need to know is the difference between the x coordinates and the distance between the y coordinates. So I would do negative 3 minus 4 is 
Let me ask that again. Negative 3 minus 4 is? Negative 7. That's my A distance. A squared plus negative 5 minus negative 6. 1 equals the distance squared. 49 plus 1 equals d squared. d squared is equal to 50. d is equal to the square root of 50. 5 square roots of 2 is equal to d. Simple Pythagorean theorem. You would get the same answer if you use the scary formula in the green box. I would argue that this is easier. Questions? Good. You do it. Find the distance between G and B. Oh, wait. One other thing. Hold on. Before you finish. Notice in problem one it says exact distance. That's why I left my answer as five square roots of two. Problem number two says approximate distance. That, that means you're going to pick up your calculator and take the square root on your calculator when you get your answer. Round it to two decimal places, please. Thirteen point nine three is a common answer. Yeah. Okay, two ways to do it though. Well, three ways actually. You could do the gunky thing in the green box, but let's do it this way. Um, one minus six is negative five squared plus one minus fourteen is negative thirteen squared. Remember minus signs go inside equals d squared. 25 plus 169, uh, 194, 194? Approximately 13.93. How many people did it this way? Are you hand? Did anybody do it the other way? Six minus one squared, 14 minus, is it, it doesn't make a difference? No, I would just get 6 minus 1 is 5 squared, plus 14 minus 1 is 13 squared, and go from there. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, look, D is still equal to 13.93. Okay. Easy. Just be careful doing your subtraction problems, especially when there's minus signs in it like in the first one I did. And again, because it says approximate there, we would take a decimal equivalent rounded to two decimal places. Okay, think you can handle that? Yes. Beautiful. So, the plan for the rest of the week is as follows. We've covered a bunch of stuff in a short period of time. So tomorrow we're gonna use it as a work day to uh, refresh your memory on some of these things. Like for instance, simplifying radicals, um, segment problems involving between it, segment problems involving midpoints, Pythagorean theorem, distance formula. Friday we'll have a quiz. And then that'll give you nothing to do over the weekend for the three-day weekend. Tuesday, when we come back, we'll pick up where we left off. Sound like a plan? Yeah. Beautiful. I'll unlock day four, and you can uh, make a dent in that in the next 13 minutes. What's on Monday? Monday, day off.
No, it's...